tea time. Welcome everybody, Soldan of the Grin Brothers here, and it's time for another episode of Tea Time. Now I've got a bit of a headache during uh, this tea time, but I also have a new tea to try out thanks to the uh, Christmas calendar, and you know what they say, you can't stop for work as it were. Uh, well, there's more enjoyment than work because I doubt I'll get money from this, but hey, you know, you know, I... I like to put in the effort, as it were, so I have a headache, so what? I've got a new tea to try and something to talk about. So then, for today's tea, I shall be having vanilla, orange, and coconut. It's the tea I opened up on my uh, eighth day on my calendar. It's a Rubios, Rubos Herbal Tea. Uh, brew time recommendation is three to five minutes. Uh, the brand is, again, English Tea Shop, and information on it is it's an organic Rubos herbal tea with small touches of orange peels, cloves, and vanilla pods. Now, i got to say I'm a little bit worried about this tea. I'm having it with milk. I brewed it for roughly four minutes. I couldn't tell what time I actually brewed it at specifically, so my guess was more rough four minutes here. And whilst it's smelling a bit better now, uh, when I opened the tea bag, it smelled like clove oil. And uh, clove oil is that sort of thing you never actually want to put in your mouth. You only put it in your mouth when you're in the extreme pains. I was uh, doing so when I was having uh, tooth problems. I'm not sure if it was my wisdom teeth or it's just the fact that I have a very small jaw. But I was in absolute agony and I kind of just gargled clove oil. Worked wonders, but gosh, it's one of the worst tasting things in existence. So I'm a little worried about this. I'm starting to smell the vanilla, but otherwise it's got a real strong uh, scent of clove, and, uh, clove oil and uh, that terrifies me. In any case, uh, for today's tea time, well, as I've had to kind of spring up of these whole Christmas calendar tea time things uh, off the top of my head, I decided to go into DeviantArt and ask for suggestions, if anyone's got any video game related topics I could uh, just talk about. And my friend HB, and uh, regular commentator on the uh, channel, has um, suggested I uh, explain why I sold in. Uh, don't play PC games, because you'll see PC games played occasionally on this channel by uh, Raffi, and uh, Raffi will talk about them quite a bit, a lot, a lot of WoW and all, Blizzard stuff and all that. But I myself, Solden, do not play PC games, and hey, well, that's something to talk about. Uh, I'll cue snappy tile here. I'd say there's like three, maybe four specific reasons why I probably don't play PC games, and uh, I'll see how many of them I can actually cover within this uh, tea time. So let's see, well, the first one would uh, kind of ties into a tea time I've already done before. So I figured the, that might as well be said first because there's not much I can really say on that. And that's uh, the tea time I've already covered before on this topic is pure physical power. And in that tea time, I discussed why I prefer my games being physical. And you might already sort of like think, uh, I've already jumped to the conclusion as to why I'm not a particular fan of PC gaming and why I do not do PC gaming in the fact that PC gaming, particularly in the modern era, is very, very focused on uh, digital only. Uh, there's not much point in getting physical PC games. It's not, and because uh, even when you get the physical games, it's usually a download thing rather than a pop and disc sort of thing. I really enjoy having my games on a shelf and I really enjoy the uh, whole insert the disc or insert the cartridge sort of thing and you know take him out sort of aspect sure it delays things and take up time and sometimes it can kind of unmotivate you to play games but there's a certain charm to physical gaming which physical uh, copies of games which i've covered in that pure physical power and pc gaming in this modern era with its focus on steam and digital downloads uh, doesn't provide that. In fact there wasn't a huge emphasis on physical copies of pc games even before. Of course in the olden days, there were, you know, of course, like floppy disks and cassette cartridges for your microcomputers and such, and I do find those have a lot of charm, but it's never really been the focus of the PC gaming, and uh, the PC gaming world is uh, particularly more focused uh, on digital downloads, which is something that I'm not keen on. Um, I think for my digital downloads with the Switch, I'm probably only going to be having like one, maybe two, uh, one per year, because like with digital downloads, you kind of forget they even exist from time to time, and you know, then they just end up as part of your backlog. You know, physical games, they remind you, they're always there, sort of thing. But again, if you want me, further ex uh, me to explain further on this topic, I've already covered it in my tea time of pure physical power. Link in the summary below. Another reason I don't go into uh, PC gaming is, um, well, uh, I guess a childhood sense of royalty. I grew up with an Amiga 1200. It was the very first video game system I ever played, and the very first uh, game I ever played was Bubble and Squeak on the Amiga 1200. The Amiga line was a line of uh, computers by Commodore, uh, PCs as it were, because of course the what we could refer to as PCs nowadays are, I think it's uh, IBM or DOS, 
It's the Windows. It's a very specific architecture and type of PC. Um, technically, stuff like the Mac and the uh, Linux are PC, but Windows and you know Microsoft and Windows and all that and IBM and DOS, they ended up taking control of the brand. Sort of like how people sort of refer to Pepsi's as Cokes, despite how they're actually Colas rather than Cokes. You know, um, there's a certain naming to it. And uh, back in the day, there was a lot of competition in the era. Uh, area. First, of course, there was the microcomputers, the C64, the ZX Spectrum, the BBC Micro, the Acorn, the Dragon 32, uh, the Texas Instrument, um, Apple II, like, in the English scene, in the European and particularly the British scene, that you could go for hours talking about microcomputers, like, we were nuts for them in the country. Of course, that was way before my era. Even the Amiga 1200 was kind of late for me. I mean, Commodore had gone bankrupt by the time that I started getting into gaming. I was like three, four when I first played the Amiga 1200. But I, yeah, I guess I have a very attached, a strong attachment to the Amiga 1200 in my childhood. I never felt like, and most, like, I was able to, I grew up with both Nintendo and Sega, so I guess it was easier for me to transition from one console to another, but it's never quite easy to transition the idea of playing, uh, using a personal computer to play games rather than using a Amiga for my computer gaming system, you know, the uh, PC gaming system as it were. Um, for me, you know, the uh, PC we had, a I think it's like a Windows 95, sort of old, clunky sort of PC, that was never for the purpose of, um, that was never for the purpose of playing games, and there wasn't many games for it that we actually owned. Uh, a few we attempted to do never really worked too well, and otherwise there were like smaller things, like the stuff you get in cereal boxes, or like the educational things. Uh, the PC for me was, uh, like the night Windows 95 PC, uh, in my childhood was the sort of thing I'd use to type on. Uh, something to kind of uh, pinpoint why it was never a big thing to me is that um, didn't have the internet until I was like 16, 15 or 16. Um, so there was a big period where, and a lot of the, the sort of uh, PC gaming in terms of the knowledge of it being passed around and in terms of what really helped to uh, make it above and beyond the consoles in an area was of course the online capability. Uh, without that, the PC didn't have anything to really take it above and beyond. In my childhood, it was kind of cemented, not as the gaming PC, that was the Amiga 1200, uh, with amazing games like Fury of the Furries, and Turrican, and uh, Alien Breed, and Quack, and all that. The PC was just uh, there to type things up, and try to create stories, and PowerPoint presentations. And that was all I used it for, until of course, again, we eventually did get the internet, but by that point it had been well cemented in my mind. And when it came to gaming experiences, once, of course, the Amiga kind of faded out, I had much better gaming experiences through Nintendo and Sega. And that's for a couple of reasons to expand onto that. One of them, of course, is the controllers used for the systems. Um, the PC's base controller is the keyboard and mouse. The Amiga 1200 came with, uh, was designed in such a way as a gaming platform with a gaming focus. Um, despite how Commodore would try to market it differently in the US. But it was very much focused on the games and it understood that and it had... You know, joysticks were pretty common with it, as well as game packs and such. And it was very well sort of like uh, showcased to be designed for gaming, you know. Uh, PC never felt like that. The PC felt more business-like. And as such, the controller option was, of course, the base controller option. For it was the keyboard and uh, arrow keys and such. Like, heck, I'm so old-fashioned that I don't, even, I don't even have a familiarity with WASD. For me, the arrow keys are there for movement. I Literally, the arrows. I remember playing through the Furries, I believe I played it like that, where I'd use the arrow keys and the space bar, basically that's how I control the game and on the Amiga 1200, and that worked perfectly fine. On a PC though, um, never really again gripped in that sort of sense, and I prefer having a controller. Like, even when I think back on my Amiga days, I'm probably not, uh, aside from the childhood memory, I've not got a huge desire to like collect specifically for it, because I'm not a fan of the sort of uh, base control of just a keyboard and uh, such, but... Controllers, I feel, are a lot more comfortable, they feel a lot more natural, and yeah, sure, you can add in any old controller into a PC, you can mod things, well, but I don't like that. I'm not a big fan of trying to mod things, you know, uh, do uh, mod things and that, I'm not very, despite how I run a video game Let's Play channel, I have, I am terrible with technology, I know very little about it, and I have a very little understanding. What little I do tend to know is usually what I've been reading through magazines and what I learned from other people. It's never really something that I've kind of cemented myself in my head 
uh, it's not very uh, it's not a very concrete sort of foundation in terms of my knowledge source for uh, technology and how it works and coding and all that. So I don't know I know very little about modding or trying to get a controller to work on a PC, for instance. And I wouldn't want to anyway because it's kind of like you know a Sony controller should be used for a Sony system, a Microsoft controller should be used for a, you know the Xbox controller should be used for the Xbox, not for the PC. The PC comes with the D-pad, uh, the con uh, keyboard, and that's how I feel that I should play it regardless. The Xbox and PS4 controller, or the Nintendo Switch, or whatever controller you're thinking of, isn't its controller to me. And I guess another part of that actually relates back to the Amiga 1200. In the where the Amiga 1200 the, had the same sort of port sockets as the Mega Drive, so you could plug in a Mega Drive controller. However, the Mega Drive controller would also have a couple extra pins. As a result, if you weren't careful, you'd get the pins stuck in the Amiga port. Which is why our Amiga 1200 only has one functioning controller port because the second player controller port got busted up because of Mega Drive controllers. Again, this is why you stick to their controllers. Don't just try to throw in any other company's controllers into it, you know? On that console related basis, the other sort of uh, factor into it is, of course, games. And I guess more so in this mascots, as it were. Uh, I guess growing up as a kid, the characters of a game mattered a lot to me. It's how I recognised the games. I recognised Nintendo from Mario and Kirby. I recognised Sega from Sonic and Axel and, you know, the sort of characters of resonate with me. You know, I recognise the companies via, effectively, the mascots, as it were. But PCs don't really have that. There's never been that one figurehead, like, this represents PC. This is the iconic company that represents all of PC. I guess now that you've got platforms like Steam and such, but that's never even specifically tied to PC. I mean, Windows 10 is a separate option. EA Origin is a separate option. Even even Ubisoft's got Uplay sort of thing. Um, and even then, with the Valve stuff for the games, like, they don't even make a new games of the games they've already got, as it were. They've got their, like, few brands, and they just let that go, but without making a new game for it. And that lack of character, to me, is kind of the problem. Like, a, new, a console with both their gaming, uh, gaming series, their gaming characters, as well as the designs of the systems always have new and fresh character to it. The fact that the companies who make the companies who make the consoles also make their own games or get studios to make specific games for them gives them their charm, gives them their individuality. And PCs are not like that. They never have that charm to me, that connection. It'll be a separate com manufacturing company, so making the PC, and then the companies providing the games for it, or the services will often be different from the company who manufactured the system itself. And there's a wide range of It's like the 3DO in a sense. Like the 3DO, although to an even lesser degree, like the 3DO company had their consoles manufactured by different people, so long as they followed up, you say, uh, sort of design logic. And I felt that kind of removed some of the charm of the system, the personality of it and that's for me the pc doesn't have its own distinct personality there are m hundreds of different types of pcs you get a snes you'll get a few different models of it but it's always the snes um and later nintendo consoles and their sega consoles and they are sony and microsoft and all the other companies who made the sort of consoles and handhelds but a pc like a toshiba pc a dell pc a sony pc or microsoft pc even you know, it's not got that, you know, they're uh, all different companies making these game uh, systems. And, yeah, there, there's no real, you know, connection to it. You know, like when I think of a PC, there's too much of a range to really identify this is the personality of it. Which is weird to say about a system, like it's not got independent thought or anything. But that's kind of, you know, the part of what sort of like gets me into it, sort of where idea of, uh, the you know, the system being more than just a hunk of machinery, as it were. You know, and that sort of connection is uh, what re really compels me to them. And the PC lacks that for me. I feel that's covered all four of my uh, points I had. So I don't think I'll be able to fit this within 15 minutes. But hey, it's uh, below 20 minutes. So that's good. That's good. In any case, try to uh, take the plunge and try this vanilla, orange and coconut tea. That's actually fairly good. A strange mixture of flavors, but it's got an, ah, oh, that's a very nice orange tang, a nice bit of vanilla. Not sure where the coconut comes in. Ah, oh, the vanilla flavor's gone stronger. I let, I let it sort of uh, simmer here for a bit. Oh gosh, okay, I can smell a bit of the clover, but the clover doesn't seem to reflect in the taste too much.
Ah, okay. Um, detected a little bit clever, but the orange does a really good job of getting rid of it. Maybe the coconut too? I'm not sure. Yeah, the vanilla is like the first taste. You get a little bit of the clover on the middle of your tongue. A little bit of that foul taste, but the orange quickly washes that down, which is uh, really nice. It really helps combat it. Maybe the milk's helped as well. For herbal tea, the look of it is uh, really good. Like, um, when you add milk to, like, a herbal tea, usually it takes this odd colour, like it goes really white. Um, you know, unlike a black tea. This is kind of functioned like a black tea would. Maybe the coconut part kind of blends well with the milk. Mmm. Actually pretty decent. Mmm. Nice little orange tang there. Mmm. When the vanilla and the orange work well, they work really, really well. Yeah, you get that bit of clove. Mmm. A little bit of the bottom of my tongue there. Which isn't a nice taste to have, but hey, the orange and vanilla do a really good job. So yeah, oh, I'm surprised. Vanilla orange cooking. Round of applause. Yay! Anyway, that's uh, my video on why I'm uh, not into PC gaming. You know, they don't offer more than what the consoles do for me. The console, you know, like, I'm not into stuff like modding or hacking or any of that sort of stuff. I get the system that the developers have provided me and I play that game sort of thing. I'm not worried about the expense. Heck, I've kept the base model of, like, every sort of handheld I've usually gotten. Like, I've got, like, the original DS, the original 3DS, oh no, that's falling to pieces. And, you know, the original PSP model and all that sort of thing. You know, I'm, I'm not worried about upgrading all that sort of jazz. So, um, yeah, what the consoles that get provided to me, or the handhelds and such, they do they do good. They do they satisfy me. And um, PC gaming is all about ever-expanding and all that sort of thing. And uh, sort of like uh, more of uh, the personality of something you create yourself, which, nah, I don't need to worry about that, you know? Um, so, uh, yeah, uh, those are my thoughts on the subject. Uh, thank you for providing me with that uh, subject, HB. It's much, much appreciated. And hope you've enjoyed uh, what I've had to say. Feel free to share your thoughts about PC gaming, you know, what got you into it, or, you know, are you not into it, you know, do you prefer consoles or handhelds, yada yada yada, all that sort of thing, what are your thoughts on PC gaming in general? And of course, what are your thoughts on my thoughts? <laughs> well, cheerio!